There is an excitement in the air. Along with the sounds of laughing children and conversation, the smell of jasmine rice and adobo helps create a festive mood. Rows of carefully prepared Filipino dishes fills up tabletops. As a crowd gathers around to watch the main spectacle of the day, the cutting of the lechon. Like clockwork, everyone clamors to get a piece of crispy pork skin before it's gone. From the youngest to the oldest, it's the main attraction of the meal. This same scene has replayed here once a year for the last 45 years. Although, seems like we've crashed a family picnic somewhere in the Philippines, you might be surprised to know that this isn't the Philippines. This is St. Louis. As a chef, I need to stay curious in order to evolve. For me, that means looking beyond a great meal to learn more about who made it and what inspires them to cook. Every great city has great food. I'm going on a journey around the world right here in St. Louis to find good food and experience other cultures. I'm on a quest to find passionate chefs who cooks from the heart because food is love. It's gonna be delicious. Food is love. Love your food. Serving hot daily. Restaurant Pie. A stroll down Del Mar Avenue finds me in the hip, often eclectic neighborhood affectionately known as The Loop. The Loop has become home to a host of shops, restaurants, and venues that attract locals and tourists. Want to catch a concert? You can do that here. Bowling? They have that too. The Loop also doubles as the St. Louis Walk of Fame, boasting the names of St. Louis greats like Chuck Berry, Nelly, and horror king Winston Price. Well, who knew that he was a chef too? Lou Brock came to my restaurants a couple of years ago. And there was people standing in line outside the restaurant just to meet him. He signed a baseball for me. It was very nice. One of my favorite stops on the Loop is Vintage Vinyl. Oh, look at this. Yes. Parrot head or not, the real reason I'm checking out the Loop today is the food. How you doing? Gorilla Street Food, have you tried that? Yeah, it's really good. I'm meeting my friend Brian, one of the owners of the Filipino fast casual restaurant known as Gorilla Street Food. Brian, how are you? Hey. Brian and his business partner Joel has been serving St. Louis Filipino inspired food for the last nine years. Their location in the loop is a testament to the diverse food culture of the city. Brian, however, is not Filipino and has a background in fine dining. So how did he end up making this food? Yeah. You were a chef before uh, you came or you started this concept? Yes. Fine dining? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happened? I mean, did you hit your head or? I was talking with my best friend, Joel, who's now my business partner. And, okay. you know, we, we've always kind of had a dream of having our own restaurant, having our own business. And this is a major leap of faith for you to leave the job you had and then try this on your own. I was pretty confident in my skills, but it was just uh, going from an, uh, kind of a more fine dining restaurant into the food truck scene and then fast casual restaurants doing Filipino food, which nobody was doing at the time in St. Louis. So it was scary, but yeah. it had to happen. Otherwise, I would have been just <laughs> kicking myself. Like, oh, I, I didn't even try, you know? So you, you, you started with a food truck yes. first. Yeah. We started as a food truck nine yeah. years ago. The food truck was a way to kind of break into that business without having a lot of money to get started. And you get to build a fan base. You get to introduce to people what you plan to do. Okay. And it's, you know, it's a pretty good business model. And then it led us to this point. Joel is a Filipino, yes. so uh, he introduced her to, to the food, or how did that come about? So really I would go to, he would bring me food from parties, from picnics. You know, the food is of course delicious, so yeah. you know, I wanted to recreate that. Filipino cuisine, is that eaten with chopsticks, or do you just use... So never chopsticks. Okay. Never um, chopsticks, huh? The, the, okay. the fork and the spoon is really where you're at, where, what okay. you get. Oh, or okay. your hands, which is the way more fun way to eat. 
Okay. Filipino food. Wow. Um, you know, at this point, this is super piping hot, so I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> no. But I would say that the main ingredients in the Philippine cooking are, are vinegar, okay, soy sauce, garlic, then black pepper, um, and bay leaves. And those ingredients are the main ingredients for some of the most popular adobo recipes in the Philippines, which is kind of the unofficial dish of the, uh, of the country. Uh, my instinct before I learned Filipino cooking was to not was to use vinegar almost like a as a seasoning, or you really had to like get it balanced with, you know, sugar and salt, which is still the case here. Yep. But the vinegar is definitely more pronounced. There's a lot of more acid playing in these dishes. It's simple, but you know, you get to taste the pork, what pork is supposed to taste like. Absolutely, and that's yeah. that's key. We when we do our flying pig, we do so little to it. People are like, well, that's it. And we're like, well, because we want you to taste the pork yeah. as it comes. Even with a strong menu full of nods to Filipino comfort favorites like fried spam and banana ketchup or the highly celebrated lumpia, a sort of spring roll that can be prepared fried or eaten cold, the pig is still king here at Gorilla Street Food. So the flying pig. So that's our easily our most popular dish at Gorilla Street Food. It also happens to be one of the first dishes on our menu and it also happens to be really kind of uh, influenced by the Philippines. It's not a traditional dish. Uh, we just like that combination of flavors. So start off with the, probably the most popular ingredient in the Philippines, rice. Okay. Every it, Filipino likes it, extra rice, please. Is it a unique type of rice? Or? It's jasmine rice. Jasmine rice, okay. And next we take our, our pulled pork. Uh, we braise this pork for 12 hours overnight, basically every night. And so it's like, you know, super falling apart tender. Wow. And then we just, and all we do to it is we rub it in tamari, which is like a gluten-free soy sauce, basically. And then we just let time take care of it. What are we doing over here with the eggs? One of the main ingredients of the flying pig is the slow-cooked egg. We, we cook it in a Mersin circulator.